Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2 where we're hanging out in Isla Nublar 2018. Of course I've fixed it up a little bit and this is where we're going to be taking a look at our new hybrids that come with the secret species pack that released just yesterday or actually two days ago. There we go. Yeah, so there are four species in this pack. The Spinoraptor, the Stegoceratops, Ankylodicus, and Spinoceratops. All of which are unique in their own ways. These aren't them, of course. These are Velociraptors. But I have some of the parent species in these enclosures for a specific reason. As some of these hybrids, at least... Well, actually all of them. They, they can interact with at least one of their parent species. So... Let's start with the one I'm personally the most excited about, and that's Spinoceratops. Looking beautiful. Yeah. I, lo I love how these guys look. And they're huge too. Like if you put them next to the Sinoceratops that are living over there, you'll find that they are very large. But these guys are, of course, from Camp Cretaceous. Um, Spinoceratops was featured in the show as a baby in Seasons 4 and 5. And we do have a few more that we can release. So we'll just release those guys. And I've got fish feeders in here as Spinoceratops is also Episcopal. Why is there a fence broken? Okay, the raptors are wanting to escape. I'll just deal with these guys. I don't know why intelligence is still on. I turned it off, but I think it's a trait. Yeah, uh, I turned it off, but that doesn't mean they don't still have the intelligent trait. So I'll get these guys back in their enclosure. But... um. Yeah, so here's a few more Spinoceratops. But yeah, so these guys are piscivores as well as being herbivores. So they'll feed on the ground fiber, but also from these fish feeders. And I, oh, I think we're about to see that now. So let's zip down here. Oh, never mind. They're not quite hungry yet. But uh, we should be able to catch that later. But you've got this. You've got the Spinoceratops right here, and you can see that they are very different in scale the spinoceratops is far larger in this case so we've we got those raptors yet <laughs> there's another one that's out unless that's the same one nope that one went in oh no nope. come on <laughs> i don't trank it yet nope don't too late i guess um where's the other one I'm sorry that this is interrupting the showcase, but um, like I might just I might just ignore them, but hopefully we'll we'll get to see some fish eating Spinoceratops. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I thought it was. They look like they're standing out up to fight. Are they? Oh, here we go. Got a social interaction over here. So you'll see that the they, they'll hook their horn under the other's neck and sort of tussle a little bit. Oh, here we go, another one. There we go, you can see it right there. It's a fun little animation. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to see the Sinoceratops and Spinoceratops interact, as they can actually do that. Um, but I don't know if we'll be able to catch that in this video. What I do hope that we'll capture is them eating from the fish feed. I might just speed it up and see if we can get that. Oh, here we go. So I'll just see this one catch some fish. Oh, just, yeah, just picks it up. However, there might be a group feeding that might occur over there. Around the other feeder. Ah, yes. So they do have some group interactions around these feeders. And if we're patient, we might see the result of that. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. 
it, it steps up here and the other one sort of like um, gets annoyed. It's a very cool animation though. Oh, here we go. See it again. It's a cute animation, that's for sure. I think what's supposed to happen is when the other one's feeding, uh, it sort of nudges towards it, and that's why the other one jumps back a little bit. But I don't think we managed to catch that there. And we can just see them um, browsing on these cycads here. But, um, of course, since it is from Camp Cretaceous, there are actually two Camp Cretaceous skins of Angel and Rebel. So these were the two youngsters that were in the show. Angel is much lighter and Rebel is a bit darker. But both have been beautifully recreated here, looking just like adult versions of their show counterparts. So I might just name these two. So we've got Rebel and we've got Angel. That way we'll be able to identify them for later. That's a very interesting icon too. If we go onto the map, yeah. Interesting. So that is the Spinoceratops. I don't believe we're going to get an interaction between it and the, the Sinoceratops right now. So let's move on to the second Ceratopsian, that being Stegoceratops. It may not be my favorite of the pack, but it certainly has one of the best entrances in the pack. I really love how the first one just charges out and stands there all proud. But this is, of course, the Stegoceratops, a mixture of Triceratops and Stegosaurus, first seen on Dr. Wu's laptop, but, well, laptop or monitor. There's a monitor in the lab back in Jurassic World. However, for those who are well-versed in the franchise, you will know that that wasn't actually a Stegoceratops that is mixed between Stegosaurus and Triceratops. In early concept art, it was actually mixed with Nasutoceratops. I was kind of hoping that with this pack, we were going to get a variant, which would be a mixture of, of the Nasutoceratops and Stegosaurus, but unfortunately we did not, and got a very close recreation of the one from The Secrets of Dr. Wu back in Jurassic World Evolution 1. And there are a few key differences. I believe the horns look like they've been brought in a bit because I remember them being very wide and very long in the first game. But that's uh, about one of the only differences. And I think they might be about to... I thought it was about to challenge another one for a second. But we might be able to see a little social interaction. Potentially if I speed this up a little bit. Or not. Okay, it may not happen actually. But they will also be able to interact with the Triceratops that I've also got in here. I did also um, put some Stegosaurus as well in the park. Put them with the Stegoceratops and see if we could get an interaction between the two. Okay, I was really hoping we were going to get an interaction there, but I don't think we did. Yeah, so they'll sort of recreate the same animations of their parent species. Oh, hello. Oh, Battle for Alpha. We might actually be able to see them lock horns here. Fallen squaring each other up to see who's the boss. If we can speed it up, we might actually get to that point. There we go. The extra horns don't really seem like they should be there in this fight and would probably be a bit of a handicap, actually, when locking horns. Yeah, I think they're just going to do that for a little bit. And the Triceratops are minding their own business, and the Stegosaurus seem to be minding their own as well. So I don't think we're going to get any interactions between those two. Before we get to... Oh, oh, the raptors again. Well, before we get to the predator of the pack, let's see our next animal, Ankylodicus. The biggest bioengineered dinosaur. Or should I say hybrid? And it really got a makeover from the first game. A much prettier face to look at. 
and overall really resembles a more accurate ankylosaur. Just of course being a whole lot bigger and with a much longer neck. I love the theme in the background too, that's beautiful music. And like all sauropods, they're going to take a very long time to come out, so I'll just speed it up a little bit so we can have a good look at them. So yeah, the Ankyloticus has had a significant overhaul since its first rendition back in The Secret of Dr. Wu. Unlike the Spinoraptor and Stegoceratops, this guy did actually get a facelift, and it certainly needed it. The first one was interesting to look at, to say the least. But I really love this new design. It's really a, a significant improvement. You can really see the ankylosaur inspiration here. Sort of bouncing between the two rather than opting for one or the other. And I think it really works well here. And we also have some ankylosaurus and diplodocus in the enclosure. Now you might think it's a sauropod. It's not going to interact with an ankylosaurus. They actually do. But I like with the others, I don't know if we're going to be able to see that given these guys are also quite slow. But I'll also release the, la the last two just to um, get a whole herd out here. But um, yeah, they are... I almost want to say they're bigger. Yeah, they're bigger certainly in overall girth than the Diplodocus, but the Diplodocus still remains a lot longer. So I'll have to wait and see if we get any interactions. Now... Oh, they are loud too. However, I will tell you now that unfortunately the Ankyloticus, even though it's heavily armoured and has a massive club tail, it does not fight back, which is one of the downsides to this creature. Other than its significant overhaul, um, the lack of being able to fight back against potential threats is a little disappointing, personally. Yeah. But it is still a beautiful creature, and I've gotten used to the sauropods not fighting, but hopefully that is a feature that is added later on. Because these guys were certainly not easy prey when they were alive. I mean, this guy obviously wasn't, but the rest of the sauropods, like Diplodocus. Diplodocus itself would have fought back pretty well against predators like Allosaurus. So hopefully we may be able to see that um, in a future update, of which this... This pack does not actually have a major update, which is an unfortunate um, occurrence, but I do think it's it's got a purpose, and hopefully I'm proven right on that, and we may be seeing something very significant in the future. Now, the Velociraptors may be escaping, but we're going to release the Spinoraptor, our last hybrid, making its significant return from the first game. Out of all the hybrids, this is the one that most people wanted to return, as it is a very cool hybrid, and is also a lot bigger than the regular dromaeosaurs. And I'll just release the last three here. And I might also do a bit of a size comparison, because this is something I was curious about, whether they are at all much bigger than a Utah Raptor. Or they're a bit smaller, we'll have to see. I'll release one in 3, 2, 1. So I'll get a Utahraptor out to see the comparison. Oh, wow. Okay. So the Spinoraptor is actually taller than the Utahraptor. Sorry, buddy. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought they were actually going to be pretty even in size, but it seems that the Spinoraptor does surpass um, the Utahraptor here. It's still my favorite, though. <laughs> I'll say that. But like the Spinosaurus, this guy is a Piscivore and was so in the first game as well. And yeah, it's a, it's a very cool creature. But I don't know if we're, like with all the other hybrids, I don't know if we're going to get the interactions. These guys will probably fight to the death though because these guys don't get along. But it, overall, it's not my favorite pack. I'll say that much. It's certainly not my favorite. If... I were to say what my favourite was. Um, oh, there we go. Well, while I'm talking, let's watch these two have a bit of a tussle. Yeah, so 
This is not my favorite pack. I'll just say that right now. But um, it, it certainly fills a niche that was certainly lacking in diversity. We only had the Indoraptor, Indominus Rex, and Scorpius Rex, all of which are canonical hybrids, but all were carnivores. And I think having some herbivorous hybrids really adds a, sp a spice of diversity into the game, which I think was necessary for the hybrids, as we really didn't have a lot of choice. But now we do. We have seven hybrids, and I'm very happy with that. But, um, yeah, it's certainly one of the weaker packs that Evolution 2 has to offer, and, and especially with the lack of a major update, which personally are my favorite parts of the DLC period, as the updates really do add a lot. Oh, here we go. Just getting a bit of a social interaction there. But, um, of course, disagreeing there. But, yeah, I, I would say... It's not my. It's okay. I, it, it's it, it's hard to it's hard to say because I know a, a few people do a lot of people do like this pack and I know a lot of people don't like this. Oh, here we go. Stegoceratops social interaction. I know you could barely see it, but the one of the Stegoceratops actually lifts up the other's leg. But um, yeah, this isn't my favorite pack. I'll just say that I won't give a specific number as I haven't really necessarily rank the packs i don't believe but yeah it's not my favorite and it does what it it's it does what it set out to do which is a good thing however all these hybrids do come with one bonus they all have bioluminescence so if i go to night time oh that's dawn night there we go we can zoom around to all of these guys, and you'll notice they are all bright glowing. So the Spinoceratops really has a properly lit up sail, which I think it just looks beautiful. Uh, if we find our Stegoceratops, uh, there they are. They have a very... It, it's a very nice um, bioluminescent glow, actually. I really like that. I can't really say what it's necessarily supposed to be, but um, I like it nonetheless. And you can see the same with these guys right here. Spinoraptor 2 comes with some bioluminescence, a bright pink color with a bright red tip to the tail. Oh, it's reminding me of the new Godzilla, in a way. And speaking of Godzilla, Ankylodicus, I will say, is very Godzilla-esque in its um, bioluminescence. Those blue veins. Looks incredible. Really like it. Oh, jeez, that. <laughs> Flashbang. Oh, that's probably the user after. But while we're here, there are two other hybrids that did receive bioluminescent patterns, those being Indominus Rex and Indoraptor. Now, I haven't actually seen these in the game yet, so we'll actually have a look at these guys. So I'll release an Indominus Rex in that paddock. And actually, I'll release the Indoraptor in this paddock as well, just so we can see them. So both have Lux skins. The Scorpius Rex, unfortunately, does not have a Lux skin. Might double check just in case they sn snuck it in, but uh, I don't think they would have, considering it's a DLC dinosaur that came separately. No, we just have the Camp Cretaceous skins. Damn it. <laughs> but if I'll speed this up and get these guys out. Uh, Indoraptor. So that'll just take a few seconds. The bioluminescence does add a lot to the hybrids and makes them a bit more interesting to build for. Um, as, yeah, you can build a proper nocturnal park now and have all these glowing dinosaurs around. So, I actually haven't seen a lot of the daylight version of this skin. So, it'll just speed up this release. I actually really like this skin. I don't know how similar it is to the regular Yukon River, but I almost think this one's much closer to the movie version of the Indominus Rex. So I'll release the Indom out, and he's just going to go have some fun outside, and we'll release the Indoraptor as well. Now this one is much easier to see where the bioluminescence is, as it's right on the eyebrows too. I and mean, this is a pretty cool skin, actually. But let's see what it's like at night. So... If I pause the game here, you can see that beautiful pink coming in. Right on the eyebrows as well. I mean, 
Indoraptor is certainly a hybrid that I didn't really think needed bioluminescence, but it's great that it has it anyway. Gives gives it a bit of extra flair. Now, where's the Indominus Rex? Should be glowing bright blue, so... Uh, Indom. Indom, where are you? He might be he might be still in the paddock? I don't know. Um, let's find him. Oh, there he is. So I'll just hop into bio, <laughs> bioluminescence. Yeah, look at him. Von skull and ribs here. That's a, it's a very cool pattern. This one, I like this. Just strolling around, and now resting. Yeah, so these two skins do come with the the DLC, so you can't just get them in a free update. But uh, yeah, otherwise that's pretty much all I'm going to show. Not all the hybrids have unique kill animations. The Stegoceratops and Spinoceratops just keel over their target. Spinoraptor does have some interesting kills when it comes to the goats, the guests, and I think some medium carnivores like Baryonyx, Megalosaurus, and Metri. All those have some unique kill animations from Spinoraptor. But I'm not... I don't have that um, malicious intent right now, so... I won't be just showcasing death and destruction from these hybrids. But let me know in the comments what do you think is your favorite hybrid of the pack and whether you would consider buying this pack. Personally, it's it's a very niche pack and it's one that I wouldn't say you have to get, but you get it if you love hybrids and you like bioluminescent dinosaurs, as this is... It, it gives you both of those things. But for now, I'll leave you guys with that and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.